To high caliber, where I'm realizing my potential while protecting my mental. Thank you for showing up today as I continue to invite you to feel real still. Feel all that you are, show up as your authentic self, and be present because that is all that we have. I am so grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you for tuning in, for watching my trailer, for clicking subscribe for whatever reason. And so I appreciate you and I'm grateful for you experiencing this moment with me. I am one week away from spring break, two assignments away from being done at this point in my semester of my last one in college as a senior. At the moment, I've decided to not pursue graduate school. This time last year, that was a completely different story. I had about 10 graduate schools lined up, an entire plan of how I was going to apply, interview, network, and things have changed through the summer. As I've shared through these episodes, even last semester when I had the opportunity to not only do a TED Talk, but go to the Anita B.org Grace Hopper Conference, and also take my entrepreneurship courses, which I am continuing this semester, which has helped me find focus. So life has been synchronizing with my purpose, which I feel like is to empower others to realize their potential while protecting their mental. I just added that last part because in my life, when I came up with that purpose, I've wanted to be the best student, do everything to its maximum. And at times I lost myself along the way. This semester I've been grappling with anxiety a little bit more. Last semester I was coasting a little bit on my everything will work out for the good affirmation because I had time. But now I only have two months. So do I have time or do I have two months? I think I still have time. I'm only 21. I am about to graduate college, which is a great accomplishment. I feel like people do it all the time, but we all know it is not easy at all. Things happen. Life happens to where we can't always perform our best in the classroom, yet sometimes we are expected to perform just as nothing has happened, but that's not real life. Give yourself some grace because you deserve it. Life happens. And Yes, you want to be the best that you can be in that scenario, or simply you just want to get through it. You still have to look at what's happening around you and say, what is most important? Is it getting back to my full health, getting back to myself, whatever that may be for you in that moment? Acknowledge it and allow yourself to fully make space for that moment. In my life, I have been talking to my close friends, relatives, cousins, and hearing similar themes, especially when it comes to people most close in age with me. I've, we felt a similar connection on the topic of feeling stuck, stagnant. And I'm using that to define it because we're not exactly stuck or stagnant. I'm still moving. I'm still going to class. I'm still pursuing my degree. I'm going to graduate. But the stagnation aligns with not knowing what's next, not knowing, not necessarily what's next, but what you want to do. But I think it goes back to that previous idea of we feel like, okay, things are supposed to happen in an instant. And that's not how life works. You think of gestation periods. It takes four years to graduate college. I hear myself bringing up similar ideas that I brought up in beautiful, full uncertainty. It's feeling that sitting with the, being able to sit with the discomfort of not knowing what's next. But today's message is understanding that it's okay to not know what's going to happen or where are you going to be a year from now? Like I mentioned, I thought a year from now, 
I would be applying to grad school or probably accepted into a few. Or at the outset of last semester, I thought, well, I will delay grad school because I transitioned from wanting to solely get a master's or doctorate in computer science to wanting to get a tech MBA, a combination between business and technology. So I can perhaps be a chief technology officer, work in leadership because I felt those feelings emerging from my childhood, wanting to lead in some type of way, form, or fashion. And so here I am now, I've launched my own business, High Caliber, a media company with limitless possibilities from here. As I said, my vision is to create a community, eventually a platform. I have so many ideas in my head that sometimes it just feels like it, it can explode. But in all of those ideas, you have to write them down. As I've started to write them down, I've also been approached with a question in my personal life. Well, do I get a job to support my dreams or do I bet on myself and put some of my savings towards going full speed at high caliber? Because quite honestly, my this all started full time, I guess you can say, in full pursuit on Chris, around Christmas time last year in 2023, recently. So I haven't been at it for that long. And to put things in perspective, it's okay for the pace that it's growing. But even myself, I'm like, why are my videos not getting views? Why, why is no one listening? Or, you know, you can get stuck in the analytics of things. Why isn't everyone watching the full video? But when I think about my purpose and revisit my vision, my plan, and my reasoning for where I want to go, I can then find peace in knowing that I may not be seeing the things falling in line underneath the surface. I found inspiration from Victoria Monet, her recent Grammy Award, and she just popped up on my mind because I remember listening to her music my sophomore year. And I was like, who is this? She, she's jamming. So to see her roots and hear more of her story, 12 years in the making, and I know she's done more behind the scenes with Ariana Grande or other artists and helped contribute to their career. She was rating on her time to shine. And for each one of us, that there's two things there. One, understanding the right work for you. And I will speak on right work more in a minute. It's a phrase I got from one of my favorite books. But what is the right work for you? What do you really want to do? Society structure is in no way God's structure. God has the power to synchronize your life, whether it's God for you or the universe, but there is a higher power out there for us to tap into that resides within each one of us, that we have the power to not only freely think, but to freely think towards the vision that we want to curate for our lives. Because at the end of the day, the life that you end up living ultimately is a result of the projections that you start to see, which start from within. And the second thing after defining the right work for yourself is you then have to allow the seeds to grow. You have to nurture them. You can't just say, okay, I want to, let's say, I want to have my own talk show one day, right? That's a vision. I can write it down. I can confidently declare that all day. I've planted it, written it down. But if I'm not acting towards it, what strides am I making towards getting my own talk show one day, owning my own network, becoming the next Oprah? Hmm? What am I doing besides that just being a vision? I've started my own podcast. I'm networking. I'm doing things behind the scenes, acting in the present and allowing the seeds to grow. And those things like in this figurative context, we're not the sun. The sun comes when it wants and it's gives the plant that seed that eventually sprouts the nutrients that it has to grow. But it's all those other factors giving it the actions, the nourishment that it needs to eventually grow 
and sprouts and to bear fruits. And that takes time. So wherever you are in your life, whether it's you just graduated, you are already in a job and you're trying to take that next step or pivot towards what you actually want to do, plant that seed, declare it, write it down, act in the present and give it time to grow. And wrapping up, keeping it nice and sweet, I'm going to revisit one of my favorite books, The 12 Universal Laws of Success by Herbert Harris. I This is a true staple of, I feel like, well-being. And I think universal is a great word to describe this book. And I love how he, Herbert Harris, defines it. It's just seeing the desired results of something that you desire. And that places it into a completely different perspective because that makes it defined by you instead of society or what someone else says. So we're going to wrap up this episode by reading an excerpt, reflecting on it a little bit, and then I will tell you what to look forward in the rest of these episodes. I believe I have about nine left and also what to expect from this channel because I don't want it to just be a place for my podcast. I want to continue to grow my media experience, one, two, expression, and three, community. So I'm reading on right work from the chapter on the law, the universal law of action. Let's go. Right work. Work is generally defined as a means to earn a living. In a broader sense, work is the physical or mental effort or activity directed toward producing or accomplishing a desired result. If I ask the question, why do you work? Most people will give the same basic answer, to make a living. What are you getting out of your work? Generally, the objective of the physical and mental activity of getting up each morning, getting dressed, and rushing to your place of empo- employment is to obtain the money to meet the re- material requirements of your life. If all that you are getting out of work is the financial wherewithal to take care of yourself, then you are being grossly underpaid, no matter how much you make. I'm going to stop here to talk about what I just read. He says, work in a broader sense. Physical is the physical or mental effort or activity directed toward producing or accomplishing a desired result. And more than often, it is to get money so you can provide for yourself. At the bottom of the pyramid, in reference to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we all need shelter, food, and that's often where it starts. But then some people can get into that, the more money you make, the more expensive your taste gets. So it becomes a repetitive cycle of you're making money to support your material needs. But I like how he says, if that is the only thing that you're doing, is you're working just for the financial wherewithal to take care of yourself, then you're being grossly underpaid no matter how much you make. And that's interesting because some people, especially established workers that I've spoken to, they feel like you're working and that's it. That's the whole purpose of work is to get money, to support yourself. And then your passions, your purpose is outside of that. But Mr. Harris has a different perspective. Let's keep reading. As long as the objective of your work is something outside yourself, you are being shortchanged. When you think of work as something external, to obtain external objects, you are cutting yourself off from the true meaning and essence of work. In fact, as long as you consider work as an external endeavor, you will delay your success in life. Hmm. What is success in life? Not only does Herbert Harris define it as something that 
you are accomplishing the desired results of most people attach success to material things. That is, I am successful if I can rent out a yacht for five hours and go back home to my mansion in my Mercedes Benz and have a savings account full of this much money. I think in a sense that can bring some happiness, but he says it'll delay your success. Then what is success? Let's keep reading. Work must be considered on an internal spiritual level. It should not be seen as a means to make a living, but rather as a means to live your making. I like that. Your work should be an external expression of your internal state of being or level of consciousness. Work should be a means by which you can express your internal good desires and which provides the required material substance to maintain and enhance the conditions of your life. Work has a divine spiritual nature, which, when properly attuned, can put you in harmony with the cosmic flow of good, success, and everlasting reward. When your work does this, it is your right work. He has that in quotes. I'm going to stop reading there because I don't want this to be too academic, scholarly. I just like good books and to reflect on them at times. But that's what I'm doing. And I feel like this is my right work. Not only do I want it to make me money so I can survive and, you know, buy something nice, but I am doing this to live out my purpose, to become in harmony with that internal good. Then my success can come. That is true fulfillment. Not only do you have the money and material, you have the internal peace to know that whatever you're doing, you are empowering others. You are inspiring others, whatever it may be. I'm in my right work. So the question for you to sit with this week internally through my experience or my reflection, if you desire, what is my right work? And am I currently walking in that? Now, of course, I could read you more and tell you with her. Herbert Harris said about right work and how to do that. But I think we all have an internal knowing to answer questions, to tap into the ethers, the universe, to find the answers we need. And that starts from within. So I thank you for tuning in for this message. I want to continue to do more of these episodes reflecting on conversations that I've been having and connecting with others on the other side of this medium to let you know, if nothing else, that you're not alone. I don't have it all figured out, but I'm being patient with myself. This is the most fulfilled plan that I've developed that feels most right within. So we'll see where it goes. We'll see where I am a year from now. Freshman year of college, I had a year... I had a plan for each year, what I was going to major in, what I was going to do. And some people stick to their plans because that is more, they find what they want to do earlier that is most fulfilling or most aligned with their right work. But I didn't. And some other people don't either. They never do. They just go to work, be able to provide for themselves, and then that's it. Try to have a little fun on the side. And if that is a fulfilled life to you, great. I want to do a little digger deeping. What? Deeper digging. Okay, whatever. I want to dive a little deeper into what is it for me and where do I want to go? And I encourage you to do the same. So in the last end of these episodes, you can expect more of this. And also I'm going to start doing a Dear series, maybe the last five episodes to really sit in short reflection because I'm a journaler. I'm very introspective. 
I'm going to do a dear younger Kyla, dear parents, dear college, something along the lines of those to reflect on this moment. So if not anything else, I can look back on them to see where I was in this moment and have a heart of gratitude for the ability to think and express myself. I hope you have a great week. If you're new here, welcome. Welcome to the Wolf Pack and let's grow together. I also hope to use this channel for some vlogs or more behind the scenes. It's been more challenging to do that as I'm trying to balance other things, but let's pace and grace, make our way through that process and allow things to happen when they may. So have a beautiful week. If you're listening to this on audio streaming services, please rate YouTube. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And love yourself today, every day. And be peace in the world. So thank you for tuning in. Have a great week and see you next time.